What's up guys, Sebastian here. Um, I recently played an ACR Blitz session just to make a YouTube video and I thought as a change of pace I would play a recording of uh, some of the hands where money went in and talk you through my thoughts after the fact instead. So let me know if you like this format or not and um, yeah. Uh, so 3x open from the button, I'm going to kind of tend to assume that it's probably a fish, unless I know there's a fish in the big blind. 3x is not a size that most regs are going to go, especially a 200 NL ACR Blitz, maybe at 25 NL or something, but 3x, not normal at these stakes. Uh, small 3-bet from the big blind, uh, only play here for that size really is 4-bet. Uh, if they had gone really big, like 12 and a half, 13 bigs, maybe you can play a strategy with some shoves with this hand and tens and queen jack suited, but I'm just going to four bet facing a small three bet like this. Uh, table one, a seven offsuit can three bet or it can call. Either is fine. Uh, you're going to three bet a polarized range from the big blind because uh, your middling hands uh, just have too strong an incentive to call and realize their equity. And obviously going to bet on the flop, just range bet, quarter pot. Uh, table one, I foolishly folded king 10 of clubs. I think I was just talking and playing a four bet pot and didn't really think about it. Uh, but yeah, you can four bet or call. Uh, fold is the worst option. King 10 of clubs here. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, continue betting on the turn. You could slow down. Uh, this turn is actually pretty bad when I think about it, but I do expect him to just check shove king queen of uh, king queen suited uh, a lot of the time, and so might as well get paid while we can. Was a little surprised to see him uh, check raise shove the not flush draw. Obviously, it's fine. Um, just more used to players having a passivity leak. And uh, in this pool, players are finding aggression in spots where they have range disadvantage, which is great and good for them, uh, including here on table two. Um, dry flop, king high. A lot of players are just going to play call or fold. Table one, I think an informative hand unfolding. So he bet uh, one third flop. We called. Turn one, check, check. And then on the river here, I suspect there are some students that are just going to bet some smallish size and not really think too much about it. And you know what? They might even look in the solver afterwards and be like, yeah, smaller size is the most common size that's bet. Like, so I am the best at poker. But the things that you want to think about are, number one, are you ever getting value cut? I think the answer is almost never, right? Because really tough to have a deuce. And most players are not going to check back many hands stronger than this uh, in theory and even less so in practice. So our hand is almost the nuts. Uh, now, are you, can you shove? No, of course not. You're not going to get paid if you shove. But uh, you can bet a really big size. And the other thing about this board is that a lot of stuff bricked, right? Like there's going to be a lot of floats versus that size. All of the hearts bricked. There's going to be some backdoor diamonds that bricked. Um, and... Uh, you know, and some gut shots that bricked. And uh, so I think that, uh, and by comparison, there are not a lot of hands that are strong enough to value bet a large size. So I expect to get hero called here a lot. I think a lot of indifferent hands are going to think this is a profitable call. And uh, so we go, you know, maybe not for the maximum, but we go for a really healthy size. And yeah, I think you could even go 12. And I think he would still call with uh, the hand he showed up with. It was 10-9 suited. And the sixes hand randomly cuts out because I'm a bad editor. <laughs> and then uh, this hand, uh, ace-jack off on table two. Uh, a bit of a punt from me, I think. I mean, uh, so let me just walk you through my thoughts. So he bets a really small size. I think it is a reasonable light assumption that pe when people bet a very small size on a board like this, that they might be range betting the board. Um, if a player is range betting a board like this, the reason that it's good is because they're not getting check raised enough and they're getting to realize all of their equity when they have the worst hand. 
And uh, so you want to check raise more. But finding the hands to check raise more with is pretty challenging, um, especially because after you check raise this hand, it's tough to get a clean enough run out where you even get to value bet twice, let alone three times. I mean, I think even on the cleanest run out, this hand is pretty thin to value bet three streets. So you're kind of hoping to go bet check bet on a clean run out. Um, check call is just a lot more comfortable, plays a lot simpler, but unfortunately, um, you are trying to get more aggressive if people are range betting. So tough, tough stuff. Um, something I just need to look at node lock solvers a little bit more to get to the bottom of. But uh, yeah, he bets a really tiny size. Um, and I try to go after it by check raising thinner. And already on the turn, it's not super clear what to do. Um, we have stuff like 6-5 suited that's improved to a pair. Um, I thought check was quite nice because our hand is very under repped after check. Uh, he snap checks back. And then river, um, you know, it's nice having a club, but because of the way the board ran out, uh, I think we're probably perceived to be more condensed around like air and flushes in uh, practice than in theory even. And like a hand like this is not really going to be on someone's radar. Um, and yeah, I just don't really expect him to hero call all that often. Uh, I'm not sure what size or hand really wants to go. Um, I did run like a sim at some point and I think the preferred block size is 10%. I went 20% or 25%. Um, just kind of a tough spot, and I have no one to blame but myself. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess we're hoping for a call from like 10-9 of diamonds. Uh, yeah, I, I... What else? What else are we really hoping to get called by? Um... Ace eight, ace nine, ace five suited. Um, oh, king ten of diamonds, maybe if he has that. It, yeah, it's just super awkward. But I mean, we've had a very, very tiny size, so it's going to perform pretty similar to check. And then table one, we just get put in the blender. Uh, button. We check range uh, versus the flat. The flat's very strong range. You can almost treat it when in doubt, like the, your, your opponent three bet. Like just because either pre-flop raiser doesn't mean anything. Their, their range is just much stronger than yours. Um, we have hands like king ten offsuit that they never have if they're a good reg. And uh, I would have thought that my hand is a pure call when I ran it. It turns out that my hand is mixing folds already on the turn. And then on the river, uh, you know, we block Queen Jack. Um, but he's shoving a lot of hands for value, I think, that are not Queen Jack. 7-6, um, any set, even some two pair. And so it's not that exciting you know, having a Jack. Obviously a bit of a spoiler. Our opponent does, in fact, rip it. And, you know, I, I think you just have to fold. I mean, I, I do believe that players at this stake are good enough to be turning pairs into bluffs, for sure. But if I had to guess, are they turning too many pairs into bluffs or too few pairs into bluffs? I am going to guess they are turning too few. So, you know specifically like eight seven suited right and maybe he just started blasting off with threes like eh, it's really tough for him to have a bluff so very easy fold i think fast forward a bit queen jack here 
villain bets one third, we can check raise or we can check call. Um, I'm going to prefer check raise uh, in a wider formation. He's got a lot of hands here that are going to be, in theory, indifferent, that just look very pretty, and he's going to have a tough time folding. You know, uh, tens through queens, uh, and maybe even stronger than that. Uh, and then this annoying half-pot size. Your instincts say go after it. Uh, in theory, I'm pretty sure raise, call, and fold are all fine. Um, you know, it's tough to know what to do. I mean, it does seem like he has King Jack or King Ten or something, but do we even get those hands to fold? Uh, not really clear. And there are so many good spots to bluff that I think anytime it feels like you're not sure, you can just give it up and, and control your frequencies that way a little bit. So we do muck. And yeah, table one, not quite a range bet board. So, you know, you could have started out with half pot or something, um, but in a vacuum, I don't think any size is really a mistake here per se. And uh, we get check raised, which seemed to be in vogue at these stakes. So probably tempted to bet one third for that reason as well. Um, there is an argument for three betting the flop just because the board is so dynamic. Uh, Jack ten, seven eight, uh, maybe something like ten eight suited, king ten suited, king jack suited, all of the clubs. Um, and the problem is that if he does somehow have like ace queen or maybe king queen, um, there may be runouts where he slows down a lot and maybe stops putting in money. So um, for that reason. You kind of almost want a three bet, I think, but uh, it's a three bet pot. All of the money gets in very easily. Uh, calling with a set in position can never be that bad um, when it's a three bet pot. So, yeah, we call. And obviously, this card is good for our hand, but it's kind of a bad card in the sense that he's now repping thinner if he's bluffing. So I do expect him to slow down more often on this card with like King-10, King-Jack, Jack-10 um, than he would on like a Deuce of Spades. And yeah, I kind of assume on this river that he just gave up clubs, gave up like Ace-10 of clubs or something like that. Uh, you know, what can I say? Blood from a stone. Uh, you just have to hope he trapped queens, basically. Uh, not queens, um, uh, like ace-queen. I guess queens too, but you know what I mean. That would have been pretty sick, eh, if you had queens? Well, let's fast forward a bit. Uh, yeah, so we three-bet the ace-queen off on table two. Get a call from the low jack. Very bad board for our range. Uh, very good board for his range. He has 10-9 suited. We do not. He has more condensed around the sets, more condensed around the flush draws. We have a lot of over cards that just whiffed. Um, you know, stuff like ace-king of diamonds. Uh, and I think you know, check is good, especially with this hand that does not really want to get check raised, wants to realize its equity. Um, could play some raises on the turn. I feel like if I was channeling my ACR blitz reg, you might raise this hand on the turn. But, um, you know, we're just repping pretty thin uh, aces that trapped maybe. Um, and that would be a very thin raise. So I think call is perfectly fine. And then on the river, he barrels. And if the river was like a three of hearts, I like shove a little bit more. Um, just because, well, 
maybe it doesn't really matter. It's just that it's possible that there are some flushes that are not excited to shove when all of his sets have boated up. Um, but not really, like, yeah, maybe it's fine to shove here. I think shove might be good, but we just landed on fold. Paul would have been potentially fine as well, but uh, that would be more in theory than in practice. Eh, his call fine. He might be bluffing some pairs. If the sim's bluffing some pairs, then you can't really. Shove. Uh, sorry, you can shove, but you can't call. And yeah, we three bet aces and get called by the cutoff on table one. Um, you can play different strategies on this board, but the simplest will be just to range bet. So that's what we do. And uh, we went three quarters on the turn, um, maybe a bit larger than three quarters. The uh, interesting thing is that we're 200 big blinds deep, right? So I'm not exactly sure what the value threshold is. Aces seems like it would get pretty thin if we we're trying to get 200 big blinds or make a 400 big blind pot rather. Um, but the hand definitely makes a lot of sense continuing to bet, unblocking some of his calls like King 10 suited, King Jack suited. Um, whereas Ace King would block those, um, and uh, the hand also can improve if we are behind the King Queen, so uh, with a five or a seven. So yeah, definitely continuing to bet and thinking on the river. If I get called, I'm going to go a size that is not all in. Um, so play it for three streets, but not play it for stacks, uh, which you start to do more of when you are deeper. Um, three bet pots are usually for stacks, but not necessarily when you're this deep. And let's see here. Yeah, really awkward hand table one facing the cold four bet to a good small size. Um, wasn't sure in game if our hand mixes fold or not. Turns out it does not, so I'm happy we called. And. Also not sure if we ever check raise this hand, check shove this hand. Um, feels better to do that with something like queens or ace jack, just because uh, sometimes we get called by worse. This hand, I don't think we really ever do. I think because the, range, the ranges are so linear and so strong, uh, ace king is never calling, whereas button versus big blind it might. Um, so yeah, we just call our hand also has more ways to improve than something like queens does and you know we're not thrilled but on a blank river i think we pretty much have to stack off uh we just have so many clubs and diamonds that brick out uh but this river is like one of the worst rivers in the deck um if not the worst and maybe an ace would be worse. Um, I wouldn't be shocked for hand mixes in theory. I think in practice, let it go. What we do, and I think this is the last hand we're going to talk about. Just a very funny hand. We three bet the queen nine suited a little bit loose. Doesn't that's fine. And then um, on the flop, we flop the nut straight. The board is much better for him. He's going to have way more flushes than us. He's going to have more two pair than us. And um, so we're not going to do a lot of betting. Uh, but I think sometimes betting for a small size is fine. And he finds a very sharp donk on the turn. Although I'm not sure I love his sizing. I mean, I think that... You're donking the turn to stop your opponent from checking back something like kings or aces. And, you know, the the hands that are... I'm not sure how to explain why, but to me, the hands that don't want aces and kings to check back the most are hands like jack-10 
and um yeah jack 10 8 9 suited uh stuff like that so i think partly because like yeah i'm i'm not sure how to explain why exactly I, and so his his sizing it just takes a lot of my marginal hands and gives them an easier time folding um so yeah i just don't really i think he should go a little bit smaller really and you know you probably run it and find out that it's completely fine so whatever um but yeah definitely with a queen we're gonna call and then on the river i think value bet is pretty thin i could be wrong um just too easy for everyone to have a queen uh and the thing is he just has more flushes than us so we want to be a bit careful yeah that's the last hand that i uh put in this video uh, if you're wondering what happens on table one we just punted it all off uh we mixed uh we mixed four bet and fold with this hand we rolled the four bet uh, we get called we barrel flop turn is the deuce of spades uh, we barrel turn which we're not going to do very often but you need some bluffs on a fourth spade we get the fourth spade and we shove and we get snapped by pocket jacks with the spade so yeah uh overall uh rough rough introduction to acr blitz but kept playing from there and you know like the regs are a bit tougher but the fish are not and uh as long as you are crushing the fish you don't have to worry that much um just because people will find some aggressive lines or whatever so no big deal Anyways, uh, let me know if you enjoyed this format for the video, and feel free to leave any questions or comments um, in the YouTube video. And uh, yeah, uh, have a great rest of your day, and good luck at the tables.